Amazing. Thank you, Rose. Hello, everybody. If we have not met, I'm Maggie. I'm the founding product manager for Data Hub. Uh, very excited to walk you all through what we've been up to. So, um, I, okay, let me share my screen. So if you were at our Data Hub 1.0 um, kind of release or announcement event in January, the, um, the slides you're going to see will look familiar. Basically, what we're going to do is walk you through uh, just an update of, of where things are going and, or how things are going and, and what we're kind of working towards. So when we think about what we're shipping or what we're building within Data Hub, we break it into three different pillars. Or actually, excuse me, four different, <laughs> four different pillars. So first and foremost is discovery. We want to make sure that end users are able to discover and leverage relevant data assets. Of course, there's governance. So anything related to making sure that your um, assets are well documented, well classified, meeting compliance uh, and regulations, observability. So really bringing in that unified view of all of the data assets in your ecosystem and also the observability or the quality signals within that. And then at its core is our metadata graph or what, you know, with our uh, data hub platform, where we're really just lever uh, really making sure that all three of those pillars are really well supported. So we'll go through some initiatives um, for each of these pillars, and we'll start off with discovery. So in 2025, on the discovery front, we're focused on three key areas. One is human-centered insights. So making sure that we capture, effectively capture human context around data intelligent exploration so that when you're looking for data assets, you have all of that really rich context, either technical metadata or logical metadata or that human context right next to you. And then of course, end-to-end -end lineage. We all know that uh, for folks who've used uh, Data Hub before, you know that lineage is really the backbone or really one of the core features uh, that folks really leverage. So we're always looking for ways to make that more robust or reliable and easy to navigate. So on our uh, development front, we're um, we're continuing to build out new integrations with data stores. Of course, in our industry, you blink and there's 50 new data tools out there for you to integrate with. So this is kind of always an evergreen space for us where we will continue to um, both refine and, and make sure that we're um, evolving with our existing integrations, but also expanding that pool. So since we last checked in, we've shipped a few um, a few of our, our uh, targeted integrations. So number one is MLflow. Um, next on CockroachDB and DynamoDB, we ship some pretty big improvements to those two connectors. We currently have Hex and Vertex AI in development. We expect those to ship um, within the next month or so. And then uh, down the line, we're gonna be, uh, we have queued up Cloud Dataflow, Azure Data Lake and Azure Synapse. If there are um, additional connectors that you're interested in learning about, or if you want to contribute those back, please always feel free to reach out to me in Slack and we can have that conversation. On the lineage front, so up next in our roadmap will be hierarchical lineage. So this is a way, um, you know, lineage graphs, if, you're, if you've been in the weeds of, you know, kind of maintaining or creating data pipelines, you know that lineage graphs can get extremely complicated, extremely fast. So what we want to do is uh, really surface uh, or, or provide the, the ability for folks to kind of zoom out on those very granular graphs and understand your, your lineage um, at a kind of snapshot level. So that could be platform to platform, schema to schema, um, or also kind of introducing logical lineage. So a logical hierarchical lineage, excuse me. So really understanding how all of these pieces fit together between data products and domains or um, uh, like glossary terms, et cetera. So this is really, like I said, just kind of the zoom out of, uh, of a lineage graph so that you can kind of see your entire ecosystem at a glance. Later this year, so we're targeting um, the second half of 2025. We just, we want to reiterate that this is coming and this is on our, our radar. We're going to be uh, introducing a metrics catalog. So basically expanding on our existing glossary term support, but making it easy for folks to register, associate, and document uh, key metrics within Data Hub. So if this is, I know that there's been a ton of chat or a lot of buzz in the community. I've had a lot of folks reach out to me wanting to partner on this or, or just kind of keep tabs on this one. So please do know that this is coming in the second half of the year and we'll absolutely be soliciting uh, your feedback so that, so that we can make sure that this is a well-designed um, well feature for your use case. Moving on to our governance uh, pillar, the three areas of focus for this year are universal data discovery, so visibility into every data set, every AI model, every transformation, every dashboard, making sure that we have 
uh, or treating Data Hub as that central or uh, universal data uh, re registry. Next is our centralized compliance. So uh, ensuring that Data Hub is well positioned to be that central spot for ownership, documented purpose. So for folks who are um, adhering to GDPR regulations, you know that you need your documented purpose, uh, PII classification all in one place. And then last but not least, policy enforcement. So once you've already done that hard work of, of annotating or, or classifying your assets, making sure that that propagates out to the source, so you can actually enforce those policies. So currently in development, we are um, working on tag and glossary terms sync back into external platforms. So what does that mean? It means if you go into Data Hub and you um, start classifying either a data set or a column, maybe as uh, highly confidential or has PII, You've already done that work, so let's push that out to your source. So currently, we are um, putting our final touches on our on open sourcing our Snowflake um, bidirectional sync, um, and then next up will be Google BigQuery and DBT. I will call out for folks who are on Data Hub Cloud; these three are already um, available to you. So if you want to start working with those, please reach out to your uh, your Acryl teammate, and we will help you get set up. Later on in the year, we're gonna be working on uh, kind of parent-child assets or logical data sets. So really what this means is kind of having a singular definition of, uh, of a data set and then as associating it with its various kind of materialized layers. Um, so we see this a lot, particularly in kind of the prod to warehouse production flow, where you're basically, you know, you're, you're replicating the exact same data set, it's just materialized in various places. So the idea here is that you can manage uh, definitions or terms or tags at that kind of parent level and then propagate that down to the children. So like I said, this will be coming in the second half of the year. On to the observability front, our key focuses here are making sure that uh, observability is accessible so that we're democratizing data quality by making it understandable by all of uh, all the data hub users. Uh, making sure that uh, observability is collaborative. So we'll have said, uh, so treating Data Hub as that centralized tracking, communication, and resolution of data quality incidents layer. And then also contextual, so that when you're, um, when you're responding to an incident or you're responding to a data quality issue, you have that really robust context of how it's used, how it's produced, et cetera. So in, um, in Data Hub 1.0, we actually ended up, uh, we were able to ship this out, our uh, improvements to our assertions. So in this, um, when you are populating assertion outcomes into Data Hub, you can now easily search, or fil search filter, <laughs> excuse me, and group those data quality checks as well as view your historical context. So just making that much easier to navigate, particularly when there's a large volume of assertions. Um, currently in development, we are working on an enriched in, uh, incidents flow. So this is where in Data Hub, in addition to creating an incident, you can also set its priority, manage its stage, add assignees, and then see that full um, that full history log all in one place. Moving on to the platform. So the part of our, our open source project that handles all of these three pillars. Our areas of focus for this year are um, number one on our APIs and SDKs. So we wanna make sure that <clears throat> there's really robust mechanisms for developers to automate the registration, the enrichment and the retrieval of data assets within Data Hub. Quality of service, we wanna make sure that those are really delightful experiences for our developers. And then last but not least, audit logging and tracing. So making sure that where there's kind of um, important user activity events. So uh, actions made within within Data Hub itself, uh, and where you need an actual audit trail for it, or increasing our operational uh, traceability of those events. Notably, we are um, currently working on improvements to our Python SDK. So, if you see any announcements or notes around our Python SDK v2, this is what we're talking about. So, at a high level, these APIs are for registering, enriching, and retrieving data assets in Data Hub. So getting those data assets in, making sure that they're well covered with their uh, metadata enrichment, and then pulling it out uh, for use in, in external systems as necessary. So we have already shipped our search and data set SDKs. So um, just much more simplified and streamlined and performant uh, uh, options there. We're currently working on our lineage SDK, uh, SDK excuse me, 
Um, and then coming after will be a big uplift to our docs to make sure that there's uh, high visibility and um, understandability of these improvements. And then up next, we'll have our AI SDK. So you can think of this as um, a way to make sure that you have really robust and um, high coverage of mapping your AI tooling and systems back into Data Hub. Up next, the, um, the one other thing on our platform side is our service accounts. So we'll be introducing service accounts for, um, for teams to create and manage uh, programmatic workflows and custom automations. Um, this is really, really useful for folks who are working on larger teams and handling or managing Data Hub at scale. So that way you can have kind of dedicated service accounts that aren't tied to an individual user and instead are associated to kind of ownership by a team. So I know I covered a lot in that. Um, so this is you know kind of our, our all of our initiatives at a, at a high level glance of um, where they where they sit within each of those pillars, where they are in their development cycle, and when we have those planned. We are always excited for feedback, for collaboration, um, and you know any input along the way. So please don't hesitate to reach out to me if you have any questions. And we'll be sure to keep folks updated both uh, on our blog in Data Hub Slack and uh, via our email newsletter.